Malweni, Malweni, and welcome to another Mase Matwala video. Thank you so much for choosing to watch based on the title, even though you don't know me. And all the people who know me, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as you can see with the title today, we're talking, and the setting actually, we are doing something different. So we're doing a Bible study. I'm not sure if I'll record Bible studies from my room or not, but I just feel like it's more comfortable and it's where I normally read my Bible. So, yeah. Uh, today, we are talking about will Jesus come back in the flesh, in spirit, or will he even come back at all? That's the honest truth. Will Jesus even come back? Because, wow, there's just a lot happening in the world with the pandemic, with level lockdowns and low shedding. If you're in South Africa, you know what I'm talking about. But there's just quite a lot happening right now. So I think it's a question that also we assume we know, but we don't really have biblical verses and references that we can go to. So it's easy for us to start questioning. Well, for me, it was a bit easy for me to start questioning a few things when I was approached by Shintunji members and they told me that Jesus is back and talking through one person, you know, so I think it's very important that you grab your Bible You grab a notebook. I have this a friend of mine got me this And then I have some highlighters here I spoke about this in my previous video with Jess that I have a new Bible because my old one has all the highlighted verses that I got from um, that we were reading and meditating on at Shinchunji. So, I'm actually going to open this now in front of you guys. And I will be very embarrassed because I haven't opened my Bible in a while. You know when you haven't opened your Bible in a long time and then you're trying to find Wiz or Exodus. And you're trying to find Thessalonians. And you don't there scrolling <laughs> behind everybody. Got myself an NIV Bible. I think it's cute. There we go. <gasps> oh, I love it. I love it. And it has those red notes. Does it? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's not waste any more time. I'm hoping this is not going to take too long. Um, yeah, so one thing that's very important before you go into your Bible session, please do a quiet prayer and ask the Lord to just like make things clear, make things understandable, make things plain unto you that you may truly understand what he's trying to say in this, in this book, this book. Okay, so please pause the video right now ding, and then do yourself like a two minute, five minute prayer or you can do it on your palette on the inside but preferably praying out loud is always just a bit better for me okay so let's go to the first scripture that will help us understand if jesus when he comes back in the second coming will he come back in flesh or in spirit all right so let's go to acts chapter one Ooh, the Bible, guys. Okay. at least i remember acts is in the new testament <laughs> Acts chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. Okay. Oh, it's so weird having a new Bible. Like it's still so hard. Uh, okay. Acts chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. I'll read out loud and I'll put the scriptures here down below. Okay. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Okay, cool. I think the last part there uh, 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 is what I want to highlight. Verse 11, where they say this after the comma. <laughs> the same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven 
will come back in the same way they saw Jesus going up into heaven after he, they physically, this is not spiritual, they physically saw him going into heaven. You can read from um, uh, the beginning of chapter 1, but this is what's important here. It says, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So it doesn't speak about he will come back a different way. The same way that people saw in Jesus in the New Testament back then, in the first coming, go up into heaven, is exactly the same way that he shall come back. So this is not, this is not spiritual. This is physical. All right. So I'm going to be highlighting verse 11 quickly. Oh, you're so weird, this new Bible, guys. Oh, my first highlight. You got to share with me my first highlight. Imagine. All right. Okay. Another reference. I hope you highlighted with me. Another reference is Matthew 24, verse 23 to 27. Let's go. Okay. Matthew 24, verse 23 to 27. I'm also because I have long nails. Everything I have to look up. Okay, let's get there. 24 verse 23. Alright, found it. Sorry, guys. Matthew 24 verse 23 to 27. Let's read this out loud. Okay. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you in advance. So if anyone tells you, here he is, out in the desert, do not go out, or here he is, in the inner rooms, do not believe. For as lightning, sorry, I'll start there, 27. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. I love verse 27, I'll read it again. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of the Man. Of man, sorry. So, highlighting this one again, I'm going to use pink quickly. So, this speaks about physical direction. From east and west, that's direction, right? That's not referring to a certain type of people. It's not referring to a certain kind of people. It's, spe it's speaking about length. I guess, direction, for lack of a better word again. So this means each and every person, when the Son of Man returns, they shall see him. So if in Eastern Cape, I will see him. If I'm in Durban, I should be able to see him. If I am in China, I should see the Son of Man when he returns, from the east to the west. So it means every person every eye will see him it doesn't refer to a certain group of people will see him it doesn't refer that to only people who are believers and people who are christians will see him it doesn't refer to people of a specific church will only see him it even doesn't go as to the type of people the character that they have you know when people are just like oh you must be without sin you must be pure you must be holy I'm not disputing those things. But my point is, every person will see him from the east to the worst of the earth. The son of man shall be seen. I'll read this again. Matthew 24, verse 27. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible, even in the west, so will be the coming of the son of man. All right? Okay? Cool. Let's also go into Matthew 24, verse 30. So let's go down. So we're just going down the same chapter. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth 
will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I think the one thing that's very important for me here is that, and then all people of the earth, then all people of the earth. So the direction I was mentioning is exactly this. So this is in, in, verse, in verse 30. Let me quickly highlight. I don't know with power and glory and great glory. I don't know what that means. Like Andias, Andias, I really don't know what that means. Like what does it mean that he'll come back um, from heaven with power and great glory? What does that physically look like? I have no idea. But what I know is every single person on earth will see him. Okay. Right. First uh, Thessalonians verse 4. Chapter 4, sorry, verse 16. I have no idea where the Thessalonians are. Corinthians, Second Galatians. I think it's somewhere there. Yes! <laughs> okay, my memory is not completely gone, guys. Okay, let's think. I haven't opened my Bible. I opened my Bible once, maybe a month ago. And then before that, I didn't open it for approximately... Definitely more than eight months before that. Yeah. But anyway, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. His nails, y'all. I legit need to skip one. Okay. Chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. Let's go. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Himself. Highlight himself. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voices of the archangels, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will, ri will rise first. Wow. I love this. I really love this. I think, okay, so this for me testifies to the fact that nobody else will come and say like like the previous verse was speaking about do not be see the uh, be deceived by false prophets false prophets tend to say that god is speaking to me and jesus is speaking to me and to me only type of situation and this is not the truth where and and they can't say things like i am the second coming of jesus because jesus speaks through me because the bible strictly says here strictly let's go back for the Lord himself, whoop, lost, will come down from heaven himself. There's nobody else that's going to take his place. There's nobody else that's going to stand in between you seeing him when he comes back. The Lord himself will come back. So very, very important to highlight, highlighting it in my what color is this? Orange. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. Amen, amen, amen to that. So, two things that are important. One, Jesus will come down in the flesh as we have, spoke, in, as we have spoken about. Let me do that again. Number one, things to note, Jesus will come down in the flesh. Number two, he will come down himself, not in somebody else, in God's image, in Jesus' image, not at all. He himself will come back, okay? I think the third thing that I want to address is the Holy Spirit as well. Just quickly, 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 quickly. Because some people also believe just be because we're talking about will God come back in flesh or in spirit. So I think it's also very important that we talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the second coming of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is what Jesus has left us to teach us, to remind us. Okay, let's quickly go to John chapter 14 verse 26. I'm very impressed at the fact that I am not doing bad at going through my bible i really thought i was gonna stumble and fumble in front of everybody 
because I haven't opened my Bible in a long time. And also, I really like this red text, guys. I really like it. The red, um, the red letters. Okay, chapter fourteen, verse twenty-six. Let's go. It's really good if you read aloud. Also, it helps. Okay, it speaks about the Holy Spirit. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit. So nobody else is the advocate. Nobody can say, I am the advocate of God. No. Says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. Shall remind you of everything that I have said to you. The advocate, the Holy Spirit. It's like me saying, my sister, blah, blah, blah. So the advocate is the Holy Spirit. Not somebody else. Nobody can stand and say, I am the advocate of Jesus. We're not about that life, okay? The advocate is only the Holy Spirit. And as the word says, the Holy Spirit is spirit. We can have another conversation about that later. But I think the one thing that's important for me here is that will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is Jesus speaking now, okay? So one of the things that Shin Chunji says is that their pastor is actually the Holy Spirit. Guys, I had unlocked my mind when I joined that thing. I can't believe it when I think about it now. But my point is, uh, the Holy Spirit is not a person. The advocate is not a person. It is the Holy Spirit itself. And nobody should deceive you otherwise. Um, Jesus himself um, speaks about it in the scripture, which is very, very important. Um, also, please be cautious of people who... Who bring about new information you know as if it's new revelation that is not what the bible has taught us it says the holy spirit will remind you of everything i have said to you so everything that jesus has said if jesus didn't say it and somebody comes with new information that jesus didn't say excuse me then that is not a person that is being used by the holy spirit that is not a person that is um listening to what the holy spirit is saying they should not be bringing there's a difference when somebody's explaining something and somebody's giving clear um clear i don't know what the right word but like when somebody is explaining something there's something that that is something you you, you should listen to and discern about but when somebody brings in a new information that jesus didn't speak about please note in this verse jesus says everything that he taught us the holy spirit shall remind remind so no new information like i am the advocate i am the holy spirit Jesus will only come back in, 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 in spirit and Jesus is back and speaking through me only. The Bible, the, 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 the Old Testament speaks about, the, the, the prophesies about the arrival of Jesus in the flesh. Now the, the, the New Testament also speaks about Jesus coming back and it clearly states in these different verses that I've opened today that he will also come back in the flesh. I hope this was helpful. I hope I didn't stumble too much. But yay. Um, yeah. I think that was it. My first Bible study on my channel. So let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if there's other scriptures that you know that say exactly the same thing. So that we can all be together in community and we can have these written down, highlighted in our Bibles. I am very excited to have opened my Bible. <laughs> my new Bible. <laughs> so and i've made some notes and i've highlighted so i'm very happy guys anyway okay this is not about me right cool <laughs> if you enjoyed this video you've reached to the end of it clearly there's something that's educational for you something that you've benefited from this or something that was funny so please like and subscribe it costs you absolutely nothing that's the thing with subscription it costs you absolutely nothing but it does wonders for me to get this message out to as many people as possible other than that guys i will catch you in my next video thank you so much for watching oh! 
Thank you so much for watching another Mathe Madola video. Other than that, bye.